Hi everyone, my name's Dave and I just want to say first of all thanks very much for the opportunity to be able to share this platform and get my views on this massive era defining situation um, out there. So thanks so much, I've, I've got a hell of a lot that I want to say and I do say a lot about this subject. Uh, so I've got some notes here just going to quickly go through and give you my thoughts. So, just very, very quickly, I have utter disdain for this government. I think the mainstream media is borderline evil. But the my biggest fear of all is the general public for the way that the majority of them have fallen for this. I think there's, uh, it's important just to add a bit of context. We seem to live in the last couple of decades in like a doom-laden age where worst-case scenarios are held up to be the most likely. Uh, outcome. So we look at the media coverage of Brexit, we look at media coverage with mainstream media uh, and supported by acolytes on social media when it comes to Brexit, when it comes to Trump and climate change. Those three big debates and the debates that continue to be had are mostly very unenlightened and very tribalistic. Uh, and then obviously along came COVID-19 and the, you know, the UK's, uh, the UK's uh, planning was based on a worst case scenario model. I think we do have very divided populations which may play into the old the age old uh, strategy of divide and conquer. Again, let's look at in the UK Brexit, in America Trump. And then I think the society is now divided along the lines of who wants to stay safe and who cherishes their freedom. And I think there's fewer of us in the freedom camp than in the safety camp, which is terrifying. I think we're a very, very, any society that becomes this obsessed with, myopically obsessed with one strand of their health is a sick society. Uh, and it, I see a society that's utterly myopic, uh, brainwashed, largely unable to balance the risk of COVID-19, which at one point was significant, uh, right now is uh, basically non-existent. Uh, and even being able to perceive other risks that are still there that haven't gone away. Cancer being one of them. And incidentally on that, 60% of uh, GP referrals for cancer are down 60% since March. Three million cancer screenings haven't been taking place. They're official government statistics, by the way, that I've researched. Uh, symptoms, yeah, so I think the... Um, this and our reaction to the COVID-19 pandemic is a symptom of mass complacency. As, as Western societies, we've not had a, an existential threat to us since the end of the Second World War. You could argue since the end of the Cold War, regardless, for a number of years. And I think we've lapsed into a, a sense of laziness and complacency. Uh, we've become ignorant of history and how the tide of human civilization can turn towards tyranny. And we've become very shamefully careless in throwing away our freedoms. And consequently, as a result of all of that, open to manipulation by the media. There's a real lack of critical thinking that goes on. Mass group think, and I think the role of the individual and the role of the individual in a, th in a th thriving society is key, is now massively diminished. People need to remember that no government that's ever existed is benevolent but they can become very malevolent if the people let them and the people let them by surrendering their freedoms, which is what has happened. It only goes one way. History shows us this. Another thing I would say, if there are two groups of people, two organizations that you should take what they say with a pinch of salt and doubt what they say, it is the mainstream media and it is the government. People need to remember that. Let's quickly reflect on you know what's happened in the last few months you know we couldn't hug still can't hug our family uh we had to stay locked up at home for six weeks stay away from other human beings kids couldn't go to school students couldn't go to uni uh there were no pubs libraries theaters places where people were able to socialize open and available business has been shut a lot of them haven't been able to open there's mass unemployment uh the value of money is becoming massively diminished Old people were basically handed death sentences and sent back to care homes where coronavirus destroyed them to protect the healthy who never needed to be protected. Healthy people were quarantined and now the compulsory face masks. 
which is the ultimate sign of a society that has gone exceptionally and terribly sick. On the subject of face masks, I will not under any circumstances ever wear one of these symbols of oppression. I'd rather take a bullet than wear a face mask. It is my basic human right to be able to go outside to show my face in public and to breathe fresh air. I saw a good quote the other day that said, what can be asserted without evidence can also be refuted without evidence. And I think absolutely that is the case. There is no evidence for the um, scientific evidence for face masks. The very worst part of this for me, and I know for other people as well, is a lot of us are starting to feel very socially isolated now. Um, this is only a feeling I get that maybe people think that I'm a little bit misguided, gone a little bit mad, uh, that I go on about it too much. Maybe I do go on about it too much, but if you can't, if you can't be passionate about defending freedom and democracy, because let's not forget we don't have democracy at the moment either, then what can you? Uh, and yes, just to finish, we need to like stick together here. Don't give in to this. We need to stick together. You know, we'll win this battle. Thanks very much again. Hope everyone's good. Hi there, my name's Dave. And I just want to start off by saying thanks again for the opportunity to be able to air uh, my views on how society is right now on this amazing platform. I have already done one video and submitted it, but then I saw uh, a video that Anna did uh, a day or two ago when she was talking about, as well as discussing how we feel about the current situation. Obviously it's affecting everybody in different ways that we also need to try as individuals and as a society to find a way through this and find solutions uh, that are value driven and when I saw that video I thought that is exactly what is uh, what is required because otherwise we will only entrench the polarization and the tribalization that already exists in society so this video here is uh, my attempt to to try and provide some solutions and give a bit more uh, context and background maybe to why we are where we are. Uh, I do think uh, overall, I think that we um, are living in very unenlightened times. I have a feeling that maybe society uh, in the 21st century, Western society, doesn't understand itself, uh, isn't sure what its main causes are and is turning inwards on itself as a result. Now, I do think that in, in time, I'm talking about quite a long time, maybe 25, 30 years from now, we will enter into a new age of conversation. I think we will. Uh, I think it will it'll be a pushback of, against what's going on right now. And I don't necessarily think that history will reflect very well on this period of time in which we're living. Um, I do see some, um, I just want to talk about values, uh, personal values and societal values as well, because both are important. It is very, uh, it is very, very important to, obviously, to, um, it's, a, it's a basic human desire to protect ourselves and those around us. There is also a uh, responsibility, especially in unstable times such as now, in my opinion, to look out and, and see what may be the best for society as well. So talking about values, unfortunately, I think some fairly widespread societal values at the moment, I'll call them the three C's, cowardice, complacency and conformity. I see a lot of that uh, complacency because I think we've gone so long without facing a threat in, in the West since the end of the Second World War, I would argue. I, uh, we've become very, very, a lot of us become very, very comfortable. Life's not really presented any major challenges. Everything's pretty easy. Uh, and there are, um, and as a result, I think that there is a real uh, laziness in, in thought uh, and a increasing inability uh, of many individuals to engage. 
and participate in constructive and enlightened debate. And it is through, uh, it's through ideas that society thrives and improves. Whereas I would say right now, ideology is what has not only winning, but has won the battle over ideas. So we're not in a good place. Uh, now, the, what is the opposite to, to that? Well, it is, uh, I would say, bravery, authenticity and contrarianism. And those three values are in much shorter supply than the other three. Um, now, at this point, I would just like to say that anybody who is putting themselves out there, regardless of their view, in the public domain on Anna's platform or on whatever platform is brave um, and is showing courage. And I would also like to say to Anna as well, uh, I think you're exceptionally courageous with what you're doing by giving us all the chance to try to to create an environment where we can, again, start exchanging ideas and start giving a platform for the exchange of ideas. Because I think probably a lot of us would agree on one point, which is that the mainstream media doesn't seem to reflect a lot of um, people where they are in their lives and how they perceive the world. It seems to be pretty myopic and narrow-minded. Again, happy for anybody to challenge that perspective. Uh, and what I would say is, um, very quickly, because uh, I don't want to make this video too long, my view on uh, where we are right now is the three most important values of any thriving society is freedom, uh, free speech and democracy. All three are under threat at the moment. Uh, and there are some, there's been some disturbing trends. Uh, I am very much uh, against the the measures that have been introduced as a result of the coronavirus pandemic. I think there's been, there's, there's been an overreaction and a power grab by governments across the world. And I think that individuals have surrendered their freedoms unquestioningly, and I don't like that. However, it's important to be able to see the other, the other point of view. And I would be very, very interested if just one person would be able to justify and try using some um, statistics and some evidence and some context to back up their argument as to why these fundamental changes to society, which in my opinion are definitely for the worse, are justified. Uh, but yet I've not heard that from anybody. So again, that plays into the um, what I talked about before about contextualising and trying to provide evidence for views and you know having a respectful, engaging and enlightened debate. So, I just want to say very, very quickly as well, there, is, there does come a time, I think, where individuals who don't like what's going on, are worried, are concerned and are scared, there comes a time when they have to take that risk and step forward because the risk of not doing so, not only for the individual themselves but for society as a whole, is not is not worth considering because it is so stark and so dark so this would be a rallying call for me to anybody who's considering uh, adding their opinion to this platform to do so because it can only be for the good of us all uh, to do that thanks again for uh, this opportunity i've got so much more to, to say uh, maybe i'll do another video at some point but yeah thanks again and you know, let's uh, let's work through this together. Find a positive solution somehow. All right. Thank you. Bye bye.